So in this video, I want to show you how you can turn this beat into this beat without changing anything about your playing because all we need is a little bit of delay. I'm going to show you how I can do it specifically with the Nordram 3P because I also want to explain to you how their delays work because they're a little confusing if you see them at the first time. Nevertheless, if you're using some other electronic drum pad or external effects, the settings will apply and if you're using something else, it's actually likely that it will even be easier after watching this video. And before we start, let me quickly say hi. My name is Janis and I do videos about music production and also about electronic drum pads such as the Nordram 3P. So in case you'll enjoy this video, be already known that there's more to find on my channel. So the first thing we need to find out is the tempo and maybe you know it already but if not I want to show you how you can find it because let's say we're playing some groove such as this one and we don't know our tempo. You can now go to any type of metronome and I'm going to show it to you with some app but you can do it inside your door or at some websites as well because there's a function called tap and now I'm going to show it to you with this app because here on the bottom you can see the tap function it's called pro metronome by the way it's kind of a cool practical metronome app for free and so you can tap this button for a while and then I mean it's not going to show you the exact tempo unless you're a clockwork but um, let's say it was about 120. So now you know your beat was at 120 and you can also try playing to it. Great, so we figure out the tempo, but why are we doing this? So there are two ways of setting up delays and if we go to a setting here under delay, we have this first window that shows us on the left side the rate, which is actually the speed, but in another measurement than beats per minute, because the tempo 120 was beats per minute. And here, I'm not exactly sure if it's like milliseconds, I forgot what this unit was about, but it will not be synced to our metronome. But you can do it by pressing shift and again pressing this delay button, because now it shows you a tempo, this is really fast and it starts somewhere around 60 and now you see beats per minute. So if it's on 60, it will be 60 beats per minute and if it will be on 120, it will be 120 beats per minute. So if we now go back to the metronome, we can see, oh, and first of all, we need to make sure that we hear the delay because you can send those individual pads into the delay, that's how it works. So you don't uh, apply it globally unless you use the global button. But for example, now I want to have the kick drum with some delay. So I make sure the kick drum is selected, press this reverb delay button, and then need to choose lower parameter because we have the delay as the second value. And now if I increase this, we get those delays. And if we go back to our delay page, you see that also the left value changed. So it kind of corresponds to our tempo, but where you can really change it is here. So you can make sure it's the beats per minute you're looking for. And on the right side, you see the feedback, which means like for how long the tone will be repeated. So if it's higher, it will go on and you can really get crazy like this. You almost get a loop. You see actually the note from before is still being repeated. And um, let's start with something small. And now you can see that if we use our metronome, where is it? Here. It's the same tempo. And if we go back here, if you want to have the double tempo because this would be a quarter note delay. If you want to have eighth notes, you should double the tempo to 240. But you see at some point it actually changes again from like 179 to 90. And on the left side, you see this small bar. It says that it's actually twice as much as you see. So you see 90, but it's in fact 180 or eight notes. So if you select here, then 120 it's twice as fast. And the same, if you again go further, it changes at some point and again, you have to pick 120, but this time you get 16th notes. And that's how it works. So it can be a bit confusing, but at the same time, it's just a little bit of math. But the speed that you heard in the beginning had some other type of delay setting because this way we always have some even repetitions, but it doesn't give us this kind of 
groovy in between type feel that you were hearing in the intro and for this we have to even do a little more math because now we get like quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, all those even things. But there's also a thing that you can use dotted notes. And if you have a delay that can be synced to a clock, often with plugins you can do that, you can just select rhythms. So you can say, okay, the tempo is 120 and you want the delay to play, for example, dotted eighth notes of quarter notes. And then you don't have to do all the math that we have to do here because for the knot, there's no other way around which means that if we want to have, in this case, in tempo 120, the dotted eighth notes that you were hearing in the beginning in my example beat, that means that we have to divide the tempo, in this case 120 by 3, which brings us to 40. And 40 is what we have to add to the tempo. So that means that if our tempo is 120, we need to set it to 160 which is plus a third of the tempo in order to get those dotted notes. Because now I want to show you what happens if we use the click. Let's check the rhythm. You see that it makes sense. And now it's kind of in between and the longer you set the feedback, the longer it will actually overlap. But if you do it too long, there's quickly a chance that it gets a bit messy. But now we kind of get some additional groove. So it's very good to know the system because often if you want to use delays for rhythmic excitement, you want those syncopations and those dotted notes. And this is how you can find them. Now, playing with this is not so easy, but at the same time, also some great exercise for understanding how well in time you play or to just practice your precision. And now let's go back to the delay setting here, set it back to zero. And just that's just my suggestion before you start with the delay, just switch on a metronome, get a bit in sync, just play a bit like just kick and snare until you're comfortable. And then you bring in a little bit of the delay and try to play just as tightly. Because you see, it's not so easy. And the thing is also, if you only use delay for one element, it's even more difficult to play it tightly because those other pads just sound as dry as before. Where a trick is to also use it for the other pads. So now for the snare, we're also going to add a little bit of the delay. And then the delay becomes almost some sort of glue, which means it tucks together the elements of the beat because they are following similar rhythmic patterns. And this makes the beat overall just sound a little more, yeah, glued together. Still, you really have to focus. And now at this point, maybe you want to switch off the metronome because it helps in the beginning because depending on like how experienced you are, if you hear this, you need to understand in your head that this is not quarter notes because naturally if you hear something like this by itself isolated, you think of it as some even rhythm such as quarter notes. So it's a bit difficult to then tick, 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 tick to kind of get this feel, but it's also a matter of experience. But then after a while you can switch off the click and actually listen to the delay as your timekeeping device and then again it becomes a bit tighter because you don't have to be as tight with the delay and the metronome at the same time. It's just helping you to get there. And we can do the same for the Hyatt, which is also cool. And for the Hyatt I would do a little less, otherwise it's just a little over the top, but just for a little bit of glue. By the way, if you're interested in improving your technique or playing abilities with some electronic drum pads such as the Nordrum 3P, 
Be known that I have a full class on Skillshare about just developing a technique with some electronic drum pad. And with a link down below in the description, you can access Skillshare one month for free. Try this class and just find out if it's for you or not. And that should be it for this video. I tried to make it a little more compact than usually and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any additional questions, just don't hesitate to drop them in the comments because I gladly speak a bit more about it. I never know if it's like fully understandable or if you need some additional information. Just drop it there or also share your own content concepts of using delays with the Nord drum. Maybe you have some also very interesting concepts. So just don't hesitate to share all of them. If you're interested in more content about the Nord drum 3P, there's a playlist that I link here and also another one here with a couple of performances so you can see it more in action and listen to how it actually sounds. Also, of course, you're warmly invited to subscribe to this channel. And apart from that, I wish you inspiration with whatever it is that you create and hope to see you soon again at this channel. Bye.